This morning we talk about the uh, spiritual realm and uh, intersecting the natural realm and how it produces a uh, master seed of faith by which we can do things. Jesus said that when the master seed of faith comes into your lives, that uh, all things are possible to those who believe. We're going to look at this area deeper and uh, there's a slightly, sometimes you know first service, second service, depending on how the flow and change come. Uh, first service tend to be more on the preaching and ministry side. Uh, second service tend to be more laid back a little bit, maybe because of your lunch. <laughs> and uh, and uh, we have the teaching. Uh, it's a more a teaching flow. And uh, you'll find that miracle service totally different. And we flow with the Holy Spirit and do whatever He wants. It's important for us to discern the Spirit, flow with the Spirit that is at work. For example, if there's a spirit of worship, then we need to worship. If there's a spirit of prophecy, then we prophesy. And the spirit of teaching, then we teach. And it's important for us to discern and sense the different spirits. Uh, different, there are seven spirits and they're all flowing forth in different dimensions. And we flow with that. Today we're going to teach this afternoon and we'll do a little bit of teaching. Let's go to God in prayer and welcome the Holy Spirit who's already here, but we just want to verbalize our welcome. Father, we welcome the Holy Spirit of wisdom and revelation. Grant the eyes of the understanding of each one here, each one of those hearing your word this day. Let their eyes open and enlightened, flood of light, that they may know the hope of their calling. The riches of your inheritance and saints and exceeding greatness, your power to them who believe, the power that rose Jesus Christ from the dead. We thank you, Father God, that you would also bring the answer to Ephesians 3, besides Ephesians 1, that you will strengthen each one of the spirits of those who are hearing this word. Let the word minister life and grace and strength and energy to each one that they will receive energizing and have the spirit strengthened that Christ may dwell abundantly in all his full presence in each life. In Jesus' name, and everyone say, Amen. Amen. Now let's have a very close look at Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1 in the Greek. And I'm sorry I couldn't show you that version in the Greek unless we have uh, Esau and they can bring the Greek word out very fast. Uh, otherwise, no. Uh, I'll just read it to you. Um, would you like to try that? Uh, you know, we have Esau there. Uh, we got, okay, we got Esau there. Okay, you open it and look to the Greek side. Hmm, let me see. Do we follow the Greek side? Or just anywhere online you can find Hebrew chapter 11 was Greek. It might be good to point to the exact Greek word. Um, otherwise, I read it to you. Now, in the Greek translation, there is a play on nouns, participles, and there's one extra word that they never translate. Say, whoa, it's inside. Yeah, they didn't because it looks like redundant. Uh, to them in the Greek and uh, so uh, uh, those online sorry those are not online you can just zoom in on that small section and can you see for a moment okay once it's clear then I move again now just uh, this lower part you got the lower part there yeah. can you see my finger coming up and uh, See this little thing in brackets? Okay, of things seen and here of things seen. There is a double reputation in the Greek that is not translated. Alright, I'm going to move out now. It's going to get blurred. Alright. Oh, look at this. So, this is not good enough. We have, oh yeah, if there the LX, uh, LXX, no. H-O-T. Let's try the H-O-T. Let's see what's the H-O-T or not. Old Testament, uh, not over there, Old Testament, King James. We have not downloaded the L uh, not this L I T V L X X this will be the Septuagint. Uh, no, we haven't downloaded the Greek version. Okay. The New Testament Greek version. And so I read to you um, in the Greek, and you can follow in the English translation. In the Greek, the first word there is the word esteem. Hey, do we have a pen and paper? Ah, no, okay. I'm going to get a whiteboard so that we can one of these days. And uh, 
sorry, we have a whiteboard. Uh, in, uh, we have one in uh, Australia. I haven't seen it here, but maybe I buy one and carry it here, where you could adjust it big and small, up and down. But uh, the first word is esteem, E S T I N. It's a very short sentence, so it's very simple. I uh, convey it across to you, English speakers. Uh, the word esteem is just the word is. So in Greek, it actually says is day. So esteem day, which means is now, which is translated as now is. Now is, which is in exact translation. Then the next word is the word pistis, which is the word faith. And uh, the fourth word in the sentence is a very short sentence. Fourth word in the sentence is uh, elpizo menon. Elpize menon means of things hoped for. And followed by the word you all know by now, hupostasis. Hupostasis. And uh, so the word hupostasis, our first time it is, I haven't seen this whiteboard for. A long, long time. Okay. <laughs> thank you very much, Eddie. So, hey, we must have put it up here. Yeah, thank you. Once you assemble it, you can put it up here. And uh, we do a little bit of teaching here. Yeah. I haven't seen this whiteboard for a long, long time. Yeah, the last time I used this was for Greek class. I remember. Yeah, I was in Greek class. You all remember your Greek class? Uh? Some of you are in your Greek class. And I need to test the Greek by now. <laughs> For a long time, didn't test the Greek. Yeah. Is this the white board marker? Board marker. Okay, I don't spoil the board. Okay. So, the old sentence. Thank you very much, Eddie. The whole sentence, and uh, in Greek. Okay, and uh, see, we keep talking so much about the participle, and I want you to know exactly uh, where it is. It's a very short sentence, so it should be simple. And then your favorite word that you learn by now, which is the word hypostasis. And um, after hypostasis, I squeeze in a little bit there. Uh, this is the word that is missing, this one. That they never translated at all. Or rather, they got swallowed up in the translation. This is the one that is missing. Then on the others, you have. Uh, and like cross. And uh, things not seen. Who means not and not seen. Okay, squeeze it in. Okay, it continues on because there's no space, so I write down here. Okay, that should be good enough for you. And uh, English translation. Estin de pistis alpizomenon and hypostasis and that is pragmaton and that calls u blackpomenon and uh, the translation of this Hebrews 11 was 1 and uh, this first word is translated is is they has been translated now pistis you all know the word has been translated as faith so literal word for word translation and uh, LP Zomen things hope for. Okay. Things uh, of things. Okay, let me put of things hope for. My apologies, my D looks exactly like the Greek D. Writing too much Greek and uh, and then it's hypostasis, you know, right? It's been translated as substance. Substance. And uh, 
Then this is the word that is missing. I put it in bracket. Okay. And that's the word actually it means of things seen. And the last part, uh, this one is evidence. The evidence. Oops. The evidence. This one is not. This one, black poor man, is with the eyes of things seen. Now, they have translated everything except this word here. In circle. Missing. They never translate it. Not even in your Bible. It just got eaten up in a translation. Ah. Now you can enroll in Greek class. <laughs> <laughs> so that they cannot bluff you. You can read any translation you want and you can always go back to the original. And of course when I teach Greek, I make it very simple. You can master it in a while. The difference how I make it simple is I I remove the requirement to memorize, which is the tough part when you learn normal Greek in Bible school. They make you memorize everything. And, uh, so I don't see why they make people memorize, because uh, you're not going to speak it anyway, you know, like your, your common language, you just need to refer to it. And uh, So they make it tough, I guess they want to keep the, the standard of the scholars or whatever. And, uh, so. How does it play on us? I've always been talking about uh, the word hypostasis, which is this word. You know, H-U-P-O-S-T-A-S-I-S, Romanized, hypostasis. So hypostasis is translated substance. I keep talking about it sometimes as the word participle, participle. In strict format, it is actually the third declension feminine, noun. So, it's not bad to translate it as a noun. So it is actually the declension noun, which it, those of you study Greek, you know that it is a noun. It is a noun. But uh, Washman Nee discovered, it was Washman Nee who started using it as a participle. I think it's one of his teachings. And um, then he got, he must have got it for another manuscript where the participle, where the uh, hypostasis is like hypostasios or kind of thing in what's not the manuscripts uh, and it must have been changed all through the time but the manuscript that we have new king james one uh what we call the accepted textus receptus the accepted text with none of the missing verses has hypostasis which the declension now feminine and uh, it's a feminine now but why is it so strong as a participle because this word is a participle okay i'm going to use a different color this word, I just underlined it's still a circle. This word is a participle. And this word, C, is a participle. You know what participle is? I-N-G. That means uh, uh, running, walking, cooking, doing, uh, rowing, videoing, sitting, eating. You know, it, yes, the, the action is still going on. A participle means action is still going on. Now, in the accepted text, the participle and improving on Washman Nee's view that he just focused on one word, I focus on the whole sentence. You see this preacher man part two. <laughs> and so we, we go further. Now, the participle part is actually in this one. Of things hoped for, but there's no way you can translate it in the English. It's like you're still in the process of hoping for those things. Hoping. And still in the process of looking at things not seen. The U refer to the black pole. So these two are connected. Uh, usually the U in front of the word negates the word. So the things not seen. But seeing. It's a participle, it's an ing word, which means the action is still going on. So, of things that you are not seeing, 
of things that you have not seen, you are still is the evidence. So the process of seeing, the process of hoping is still going on. And while the process is going on, faith is a substance of two things. In the new, but in Paul's original writing doesn't have a comma. But in the new one, they put a comma after the hypostasis. So somewhere here. So they will say it was the substance of things you're hoping for. I minus this word. The evidence of things you are not seeing. So that's what faith is. But what about this word they never translate at all? Without this middle section, you got the full sentence already. Is it? Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, then the evidence of things not seen. You got the whole you got the whole translation. What's this middle part here? That they never translate. And if you translate it in, this is what the sentence is like. Now faith is the substance, hypostasis, of things you're hoping for. So it is a noun. Is the noun the substance of things you're hoping for? And let's put a comma there. Of things seen, ah, of the things the us you see right now, and this is not a participle. It's of things seen. Of things seen, the evidence of things not seen. Interesting. Of things seen, it is the evidence of things not seen. The word things repeated uh, twice. But this one is an interesting word, pragmaton. And that's where our, we take it further in this study. Oh, I got it there. So that it doesn't dry up. And so what about the extra word that is inside and uh, how does it uh, bring it to us? Okay, let me get... I can't use my normal Greek, in, Greek, normal English Bible because it's not even there. So I got to go to the Greek section which is I have the uh, Greek English version with uh, Greek interlinear and then when you touch on the word uh, pragmaton which is a pass for you as noun genetic plural neuter word and it says um, the root word for it pragma is like a D uh, it is a, a matter a thing a word now, pragma, you will know the word from the word, uh, is from something which exists in our reality. And it might not necessarily be uh, things seen, because the word seen is not actually inside. It's like things that are real, things that are touchable, feelable, things in this dimension of the visible. Pragma is where we get the English word pragmatic. So a pragmatic person is a realist. In other words, a person is not buried in the clouds uh, or dreamer alone. He can be a dreamer, can be visionary. But the person is very practical. He regards the problems you're facing today. He regards the day-to-day -day things as very real. So real that you need to make decisions and, and you need to include that into your solution and not just ignore it like some people. Uh, there's a cult called Christian Science which is neither Christian nor science. It's a cult. Cults are those who don't believe Jesus Christ is the only way, the truth and the life or Jesus as the fullness of God. They interpret Jesus in different ways. I don't know, stick. 
or some symbol or something or whatever. Uh, neither is it science because science doesn't go that direction. Uh, there's a cult called, founded long ago, right now not so many followers. Uh, they believe that everything that you see around you is not a reality. That's dangerous. So when you walk off the building, you die, oh, that's not real. <laughs> And, uh, no, it's real. There's blood splattered there. So there is a reality to this world. This word, pragma, means that uh, when you finish the first sentence, which is sound by itself, it says faith is, and there are two things. Faith is, now faith is, of things you're hoping for, it is a substance. It's a substance of things you're hoping for. Then the other part, of the things regarding the things that are real to you now. In regard to all the reality of things, the practical matter of things, in your natural reality, the pragma of it, in the natural reality of which you feel, you see, you experience this life, faith is the evidence of the unseen. That brings something up. It included our practical life in a definition of faith. So that with this definition, you don't run off in some weird corner and leave like a, uh, a person who is, has no reality, no... Uh, uh, too much in the air and uh, no more feet on the ground. It's like they don't exist in this reality of the physical world. But faith admits and consents to the fact that there is a reality that we are facing right now. In this world that the Bible calls a shadow, in this world that the Bible calls a mist that quickly passes away, even though our time actually the next 40 odd years in this end time to heaven is just less than a nanosecond. After all, the angels have been waiting for long time, millions of years for all these things to wipe out evil. And to them, it's just like a few seconds. But for us, hey, that's a lifetime of nearly several more decades more to the end of this world. So since we're living in this dimension and we came into this dimension to live, it is as real and as pragma as you can be. And there are people's life affected because they are not practical people. They are not pragmatic. They do not recognize the reality of the present. I mean, you can believe your faith, believe, 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 believe. But what happens if the faith never materializes that? What do you do about your mortgage? Let's say you serve the Lord and you say, I live by faith. And you're doing, doing God's work. But then, uh, uh, with the exception that God gives you, you know, special energy that you don't need to eat, no need to sleep, no need to what. But let's say the cut time comes, you need it to eat, and you don't have money to buy the food. What do you do? Pragma tells you, be like Paul. Go and work, earn a bit of money, buy some food, then after that, go on to preach. So Paul just earn enough money, help people, uh, buy some food, then continue preaching. That is the pragma, the practical things. So the second sentence says, of the practical things of this life, the evidence of things not seen, that is faith. There's some evidence again of things that is beyond the practical world. That is the full sentence of Hebrews 11, was one. Now the other word that we have to examine is the word phaneros. Then we meet in the Bible that one we don't need uh, the Greek, but maybe I might just write the Greek word down. Let's turn to John chapter 14 first. John chapter 14. Since you're the whiteboard, then we'll make use of it. John chapter 14. John chapter 14. where we got the title of our first sermon. It says here, uh, was John 
21. John 14, 21. He who has my commandments and keep them, it is he who loves me. He who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. That when Jude asks him, how do you manifest ourselves to, uh, how, do, how do you manifest to us? So the word manifest, when we got the title of the sermon uh, today, was the word, oh, let me write different color so it stands out. Red seems to be able to stand out. And, uh, Be funny role. Let's see the spelling exactly of the Greek words. Twenty one. Yes, funny. Okay, they use the other derivation, funny zo. So they put the word m funny zo, m funny zo. They add the prefix before that. Okay, I'll add the prefix. Let's look at verse twenty one. Yes, the prefix is also in M. Okay. M. Funny zo. Okay. Yeah, funny room means something else. E. Funny zo. I now. M. Funny zo. The M is an additional uh, prefix. But the main root word is the word funny zo. Now funny zo refers from something that moves from another reality into the reality that you experience. That's why the Bible uses the translation of the English word manifest. Something invisible becomes manifest to us. You're able to see, feel it. And uh, sometimes you can see some things, but you can't feel those things. It might be because it's a, a distance. You can see the water, but you can't feel it. And uh, so sometimes you can't even see and feel the water. You can't feel water when you play in the air. You can't. And then, uh, like I did this morning, uh, there is water when you play in the air. And uh, if you take a glass of water, Pull it down, or you don't even have to put ice. You just put this glass of water uh, with the glass container in a fridge, and you take it out. The first thing it does is because it's still cold, including the glass, it will start having water vapor outside. If you put a lot of ice in the middle, the outside will form water. The outside will form water not because the water came from the inside to the outside. The outside form water because new water is being taken from the air and condenses on the outside. So you can't see the water in the air. But using a certain method of cooling it down, the water in the air can become visible. Right now you cannot see the water vapor, H2O molecules floating all over the place. But when it condenses into liquid form, you can see. When it hardens into ice form, you can even break it off as a solid. Uh, that's uh, an illustration. Something becomes manifest. It becomes visible from one realm to another realm. Now we are going to tie this up and bring forth the message of this morning to understand. Remember this morning I talked about the spiritual realm and the natural realm. And how we must understand when there is no funny zone. I like to use the funny rose because it's actually another derivation word. Uh, but let's use the exact word funny zo. When it doesn't funny zo into this dimension, you can do nothing. It is still being formed. Can you drink the water from the air? You're thirsty. People have died of thirst in the ocean. Water, water everywhere but not a drop to drink. You remember the poet who wrote that? Yeah, some English proverb, English, English literature. You can't, you can't drink sea water, it kills you too. So, and one way they tell you, you know, if you, if you want to condense the water, you know, you, you use condensation, whether plastics or whatever, or catch the rain or, or whatever, and you use ways in which you, you make water condensed, and then you drink the condensed water. Because 
Only liquid water will satisfy your thirst. Only liquid water can quench your thirst, can be absorbed in your body. Water vapor itself, your body might have a certain percentage, but you still die of thirst. But in the desert, it's very humid, lots of water in the air, but you still die of thirst. Because your body cannot take water from the air. You need to condense it into a liquid form. And there are many techniques that they use in terms of survival things or whatever. You know, put some plastic thing or something. Something, you just have to think scientifically of some way to condense water and drink the condensed water. Right? So you survive. Besides, you know, drinking other things from your bodily excretions. Now, um, that's the word funny rocks. That faith needs to manifest before you can do anything. If you try to do something before that, faith is not full yet. It needs to reach a fullness before it can happen. That's the tricky part that we want to look at very carefully. Then we meet to Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4 in the parable of the sower and the seed. Let's assume that the word of God is the seed of faith that is being sown. And the Bible tells us that there are four types of ground. And Jesus explained it in verse 13 to verse 20. But let's read the actual parable itself, which is in the first few verses. In verse 3, you have it? Mark chapter 4, verse 3. It says, Listen, behold, a sower went out to sow. It happened as he sowed that some seed fell by the wayside. That's number one. And the birds of the air came and devoured it. Number two, some fell on stony ground where it did not have much earth. And immediately it sprang up because it had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, it was scorched because it had no root, it withered away. Number three. I like Jesus' parables. He's so detailed and, and so direct in his answer, and so succinct. It says here in the third one, and in verse 7, Some seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no crop. Number four, other seed fell on good ground and yielded a crop that sprang up, increased and produced some thirtyfold, some sixty, some a hundred. He says, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. Now my question for you, of these four types of ground, which one has the master seed? Which one actually grew? Silence from Singapore afternoon service. Not silence from heaven. Yes? Would you agree that it's a fourth ground? Fourth ground, right? Now, here is where we go to the distance. What happened to the first three ground? It looked like they got it. It looked like you got it, but they haven't got it. That is why some people think they have faith, but they haven't, haven't got faith. You look at the first ground, it actually hit the ground. They, it says here, and Jesus went into detail in verse 15. Look at Jesus' details. These are the ones by the wayside. When the word is so. Now the word contains faith. When they hear, hearing come, faith come by hearing, hearing by the word of God. So they heard the word. When they hear, Satan comes immediately and takes the word that was so in their hearts. Hey, look at where the word went. In their hearts. And of course, based on Thursday's night teaching with spiritual man too, you know where the heart is. Somewhere in their soul. It might touch somewhere in their spirit. Maybe their conscience. So, it fell somewhere. But still they don't have it. 
So I want to show you the three deceptions. Only the fourth has the master seed. The first are three deceptions. The first is just because you heard it doesn't mean you got it. As long as, let's invent a new word. As long as it's still stealable. Oh, what is stealable? The stealable means it's stealability, it still exists. What is stealability? Still can be stolen. Ah, let's not be redundant here. It means that the devil can still take it. It has to be in a place, a position where the devil cannot touch it. You might have collected your check, your salary, or what nowadays they do direct bank banking, but let's say they pay you in cash, like one of those construction workers or whatever, and they get the cash, and you say, hey, hey, I got my pay, hey. And let's say they are waving it in a typhoon or hurricane. They are, hey, hey, boom, the wind blow them away. That's a different parable that we have, modernizing. They have it, they hold it in their hands, but the wind blew it away. Gone. Especially if it's cash, your cash gone, it's cash gone. They might held it, they might have even held it in their hands. But there's no mustard seed. So the first what I call deceptiveness or what people think that they have funny though, when they don't have it is when it goes through their mind and their ears and they heard it the first time. After all Jesus said it entered into their heart. The heart is a very, very deep place. Jesus says the word was sown in their hearts. Satan still can take it. Because they have doubts, unbelief. There was no connection. Doesn't stick. How many seconds was it in their heart? My friends, it might not even be measured in seconds. Some of you are thinking nanoseconds. You will like my, all the scientific phrases now. You are getting used to it. Now, you're going the wrong way. You might have even held it for minutes. Let's make it longer. Hours. When the building construction worker is paying cash, he might have taken the cash, and on his way to bank into the cash, he got robbed. So let's not make it too, too fantastic to have a hurricane and tornado blowing his cash away. I mean, can blow his cash, might say blow his shirt off and all his clothing off and take out all his, all, all his clothing and away with his cash. But let's say, between the time he receives his cash from his employer to the time when he wants to bank it in, let's assume he didn't have a direct bank credit. He got robbed. That's the same thing. The cash was in his pocket, in his wallet, or he got pickpocketed. The cash was in his pocket, in his wallet, in his hands for whatever time he took trying to make it more secure. Might have been minutes, might have been hours, but it was. The main thing is this, it was not secure. That is why some of you, when you go to, I don't really do it, but some of you, when you go to some of these places where you go pickpocket, I see some people behaving slightly differently. So some people instead of carrying their backpack that way, they carry their backpack like a baby. <laughs> I see people do all kinds of method in case because in front someone unzip you, you say, hey, what are you doing to my to my zip? <laughs> you know, you can see in front. At the back you cannot. In a rush, somebody open and put things, take things, put things, take things, put things. You don't even know. So you put it in front. Or oh, some people, they have this uh, inner wallet that you wear. So it's not even your pocket. You wear some purse or something, you put it around your neck and it's somewhere inside. Imagine when you have to pay for something. Excuse me, I get my money. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
the person I say, hey, did you bake? Or the person hold the money fainted. So, so you hide your money inside. But thieves are also now getting more and more clever. So, one day they might find some new method to do that. And you thought, oh, your cash is safe in credit card or in, in a card form, debit card. Then you find what they can swipe your card. <laughs> Nowadays, they got the wave pay by wave. You watch and see if they're clever enough, you know, they just have to go you wave, 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 wave. Then all your credit card, all each one take, you know, less than $100. You take, out oh, of 10 people take $100, it's already $1,000. So you pay by wave. Yeah. You never sign, correct? You never enter your pin. You just wave. If they're smart enough, they in, invent some waving machine, of course they can get caught. Everything can be traced. Right? The money has to go somewhere. Unless they move it so fast. Wow, 20,000 places, you know, they have to trace. And then along the way, somebody cash it up. So time is a matter. And so. One find it, oh, I should not talk about this. I'm giving ideas to the bad people. <laughs> no, no, this is for your safety, all right? So, someone invents something where they just go near you. As long as you're near, they increase the, the wavelength of your wave. Normally, you know, might be a few inches, you know, they, but they increase the, like, oh, from a distance. Say, hi, Eddie, and empty his pocket. <laughs> 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 Hi, hi, they wave, hi, hi, and then it's increased and they wave all your credit card that you're stuck in. <laughs> hi. Who knows? So whatever form of your cash or your pay, if it's not secure in a way where it's not stealable, cannot take from you, so secure. Unfortunately, in this illustration, we are limited even by the words of Jesus. Say what? Jesus said, in the whole world, things still can be stolen. <laughs> say, put it in the bank. Bank can also go bankrupt. And so, all this thing. Jesus said, put it in the heaven. Anyway, let's say it is sold into you. As long as it still doesn't stick, it's not counted. What the faith you thought you had, That is why you think you know, but 1 Corinthians 2 says only the spirit of man within them know. So sometimes people think they have faith, mental assent, emotional thing, but they don't really have faith. Because you read, God has given you authority and power, and God has not given you the spirit of uh, Fear. God has given you a spirit of uh, love and power and of a sound mind. But every night you sleep, oh, oh my man, oh, oh my man. So what can we do? Something is not taking. Somewhere between you have no fear to have lots of fear every night, something is not sticking. So whatever conscious state that you thought you had faith, you have no faith. It hasn't taken yet. Because you still got fear. Number one, don't be deceived by the first thing. Second type of ground, you all know it in my heart now. Second ground is even more interesting. It fell on the wayside where there is a little earth. And it says they even rejoice. They got emotional attachment. Jesus said that. They rejoice. For a season. Look at the second ground in Jesus' detailed description. It says, uh, those that are on the stony ground in verse 16, Mark 4, when they hear the word, they receive it. They receive it with gladness. They had an emotional reaction. Emotional reactions are not necessary faith. That is why I'm against people pumping up emotion just for worship. People pumping up emotion just for faith service. People pumping up emotion just to try to cast out the devil. Faith might have emotions involved. 
but it's not based on emotion. And you've seen it. Some people, after they go through some of these, nowadays they got these science and wonders class and healing classes, and they're so pumped up because they believe mentally, they believe mentally they can do all things. They believe mentally they have authority over all sickness and disease. They believe, they know it, they believe it is their right, it's their legal right. They learn everything about the atonement of Christ. They learn their legal right, their spiritual right, their spiritual authority. They go out and they are told, let me tell you, they are doing this right now in some places. They are told to go straight out to the streets. Go ahead and heal the sick. Cast out devils. Raise the dead. Whatever. But of course, they don't go too far to raise the dead because that's the tougher, tougher option for young ones to go for. But, but they say, go and heal people. And they go out and in an instant pray over people who are sick. Ask them to act on their faith. Some of them might succeed. But most of them either get psychosomatic healing, which is not from the Lord. They get psyched up. After all, there's at least 20%. They have found out that the placebo effect is 20%. Some even think it's 30%. So a lot of people do get well. Placebo effect. And all those things. But that's not the way the gift of the Holy Spirit works. That's not the way to learn about learn, walking in the Spirit, which we're going to show afterwards. Emotional reaction doesn't mean you have it. Surprise, eh? So you think everyone will come up crying, Jesus, be my Lord and Savior. Tears dripping their eyes. I must really be born again. Then the other guy who had no tears just said, Jesus, I believe you. Then we are very judgmental. That guy, not as born again as that guy. What born again? Who knows? The other guy make a real hard decision. The other guy might just be an emotional guy. We cannot judge by outward things. We're not against emotion. Alright to cry. In fact, in the service, if you feel like crying, please do. If you feel like crying right now, please quickly grab the tissue and cry. Mm -hmm. Very hard huh? You know, you make a lot of noise, just put a <laughs> cancellation of noise or whatever, you know. Emotions are fine. But faith is not based on emotion. The first deception is thinking they have it when they don't have it. Because it's still stealable. The second deception is to have an emotional reaction and think we got it. And you know where the test comes to the crunch? At the pragma. Because your pragma still got difficulty, still got tests, still got persecution, still got hard times. And it says, these have no root in verse 17 in themselves. When tribulation and persecution arise because of the word, they immediately get stumbled. Ha! It doesn't work. You know, that is the attitude of being stumbled. Ha! God is not true. That is what he's talking about. Stumble. You know the word, root word stumble? From the Greek word skandalos, which officially means Offended. You're offended at God. Offended because it doesn't work. Ha! It doesn't work. Ha! It's just like when you buy something and it's supposed to work and then it doesn't work. And let's say you buy an iPad and da 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 da. I said, wow, wrong, man. made in China. Ah, yeah, imitation one. And you need to press the button, the button fell off. So, you got offended. The word stumble is offended. So, deception two, emotional reaction is not necessary faith. Faith being all consuming will definitely affect your emotion. But emotions alone is not faith. It's not faith. I know. So, the second deception is emotions. Third deception, it says, 
those in among thorns, it says in verse 18. These are the ones sown among thorns. They are the ones who hear the word. The cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches and the desires of others, entering, choke the word, and it becomes unfruitful in that. I want you to know that in the second and the third ground, something is growing. Something grew in the second ground. I said it cannot take the hot sun. So not enough nutrition to support it. Something grew. Where was it growing? It was growing in the invisible realm. Because the longer you keep the word, something does start growing. If you measure by a ruler, the first ground, second ground, third ground, you can see that the second ground is better than the first ground. And the third ground might actually be better than the second ground because actually it grow to quite hard before the, before the other things choke it. It's fighting the growth. It might get some more, deep, more leaves, more length, more roots, but still unfruitful. So you ask me, where is the growth? I thought there's something. All those things is that side. This is what I'm talking about. You know how strong you must be? Have you seen sometimes some trees or some, some uh, I always like to see plants and nature, how some plants or some trees, and you, the whole place is raised and burned down and everything, and the tree all got burned, and then they still grow. Then comes some hurricane, branches fall, everything, the tree completely, and all the, all the leaves strip naked, and part of the branches fall, and then it grew. And then comes all kinds of droughts and things, but because it has deep roots, all things happen, and then it still grew. Don't you admire such a plant and tree? And that is what it's like. Do you think that the fourth ground did not have one, two, and three? Do not think that the fourth ground didn't go through one, two, and three. Surely the devil will come to steal. He did that with Jesus. The moment Jesus was anointed. And surely the devil tried to throw cares of this life to you. He did that with Jesus. In a temptation, he offered the kingdoms of the world. So don't think that the last ground didn't face three things. The devil, hardship and persecution, distractions from the world, which is number three. So in number three, they live in the pragma realm and not in the faith realm. They live in the visible realm and not in the invisible realm. The things not seen. So because they live in the visible realm, the things of this world look very attractive. Which is why many Christians make the mistake of taking up an offer of a job with a high salary, but they will ruin their spiritual life. Or, they aim for natural things to the ruin of the spiritual life. Because the natural world passes away. We are told in Jesus' Sermon Mount, don't be covetous. The first thing Jesus warned about is mammon. Because the love of money is the root of all evil. So the last ground faces temptations of the world. Then why did it keep growing? It keep growing and growing and growing and growing and growing under one day. Fun measle takes place. In spite of all the challenges and pressures, it grew. Until it changes your practice. 
and changes the things that you see around you. It's controlled by the things that are not seen. Controlled by the substance of things hoped for. That is why we must be concerned about the three deceptions. Deception number one is the devil contradicting God's word. Doubts. Deception number two is it, your pragma is not working yet. Give it time. Remember how I told many people, and it worked for their life. I told them, especially I challenge people with this. I have not seen anyone who consistently come for all night prayer and consistently come for meetings that teach them the Bible for months and a year who did not in the end succeed in life. Now, I didn't say you come one time, you come one time, pray, 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 pray. next Friday you expect to be a millionaire already. No. But if you consistently keep praying over a year, I said, in all my 40 odd years of ministry, I have not seen a single person who consistently pray or spend time with God who did not in the end succeed in a natural world. Whatever job you're having, it just continues to grow. I didn't say you didn't have challenges. You will have them. But you eventually try. So, don't measure things based on days, weeks because God like me goes by the calendar by the way today's sermon is measured by calendar we'll finish next week <laughs> so that's what we do in series so they get a little bit digest get a little bit digest it's important for us to be consistent and this is what I promise people all you have to do is attend Bible study Sunday, and leave the prayer up Friday, you know, that one for another dimension. Consistently, you will grow. There's something that I prayed for you, something that as you, you, you can see your mind changing, but it takes at least six months to a year. You could feel yourself different. You could feel the hunger for God coming to you, coming back. And then you act all night prayer, which is, Stretching yourself. Who? Who? We cannot recognize you in 10 years. Because you're changed so well. Cannot recognize not in a bad way. <laughs> in a good way. And you will be changed and transformed. But most people are not consistent. They don't have stickability. They cannot stick to something. Uh, and put it this way whether in the kingdom of God in the world a person who cannot stick to anything will succeed anyway so where are you going to run? there's no place to run to succeed if you cannot stick to something there's no place whether in the world or in the kingdom of God you still need that ability to stick to persist that one a person must find it and the solution is very simple fall in love with God Fall in love with God. Because love will keep you there. If you don't have love for God, you can stick to nothing. So you see, the three grounds remove all the deceptions of all those things that we think we have but we don't have. So your question is, how do I know when I really have? Thank you for asking the question. Answered in 1 Corinthians 12. Let's look at 1 Corinthians 12. 1 Corinthians 12. And 1 Corinthians 12. The other Greek word that I say and I'll bring up is the Greek word that is found here in uh, verse 7. It never called the gift of the Spirit gifts of the Spirit. It calls them but the uh, Manifestation. See, that's where I get the word fatiro. 
still title the word Fanny Road. Oh my god, I'm great one here. This M Fanny Zo is from the uh, Gospel of John, chapter 14. But the word that we have here is uh, Fanny Road 6. Fanerosis. That's a totally different word. But the root word is the same. By root words, Greeks always play by root words. The root word is the word fane. This tells you that it comes from the same word. Fane, fane. And only the ending change. Phanezo is a verb to make manifest. I mean the word M is talking about to exhibit, uh, to uh, it's sort of increase the manifestation such that it's totally visible. And now uh, here, funny ro sis. Now the word ro sis makes it, doesn't it sound like hypostasis? Can you see the word sis here? Hypostasis Phanerosis Now, hypostasis is something that has become a substance Phanerosis is a manifestation that has become a substance Funny zo is to manifest. The action is still there. Funny rosis is a result of the action. It's a result of the action. Like uh, you can say uh, he ran the marathon. He is running the marathon. He ran the marathon. Uh, and then, then you talk about Let's discuss the run. See, we're talking about the whole process of running that he has. So it becomes something that you examine. And uh, when you are cooking, when you are cutting the ingredients, when you're putting all these things together, it's still process. And funny, rosis is the food that you have. Funny roses is the nice smelling good food that comes right to your table. And although I fast a lot, I do enjoy some cooking. So, except our fellowship here is a bit different from Sydney. Sydney, we used to gather together, cook. You should see my pizzas, they're that thick. That thick not because of the crust, you know, the people think the crust is like that. The feeling, you go to buy pizza, you know, of course you got a thin place pizza. Oh. When I do the seafood pizza, you get a normal base, you got real pineapple, not from the can. Uh, and then you get all those things and I buy real big jumbo prawns, not tiny little shrimps. Peel them nicely, put it there. Put a bit of those fish. If you like salmon, put a bit of salmon fish. Put a normal three types of cheese. Then after a layer, put another layer on top. So it's so thick. My pizza is so thick that even the pizza cut cutter struggles. <laughs> and then when they eat the pizza, my pizza is like a piece of cake. <laughs> oh. That's the pizza I like. A lot of ingredients and just enough crust. Say, why can't they sell those things? Because by that time the pizza might cost you fifty dollars instead of your $5.99 whatever. So, but since you're home cook, you could really do it with your own. So, the cooking that you have, all your efforts and all the things you do, in the end, the end result, ready to eat, that's your funny roses. Now, to get funny roses, we need the work of the angels. Because the mustard seed faith is what you have in your heart. If you have faith as a mustard seed, now where is that? 
that's in your heart, you could sense it. You know. Different from the first three deceptions, you really know that the manifestation has come. Then you need something on the outside. Look at Elijah. He knew that God was going to send rain. He was praying for rain. That's why he didn't move from the place until he until something happened. So, the master seed is for you and I. Inside us is senses. So he said, wow, why master seed? Have, haven't you realized, do you know your body, whether you are now, no, very few you are here, but some of those overseas, some of you could be six feet five. Huge. You weigh, let's take Clement. I'm sorry Clement is disturbing you. Clement weighs, that's the last time he weighed. 90 pounds! Hey, no, 90 kilos! Okay, now he's tall. <laughs> Clement doesn't walk like that, but I have to make it myself like that. So, you know, so, he's tall, he's weak. And whether you're big like Clement, tall like Arion, short like a little kid, all like Clement's baby, Aquila. Small little baby. Actually, she's going quite big now. We wait for the other one, for Abraham and Evelyn. So then it started baby thing again. Do you know that all the controlling of your physical body is in one tiny little thing in the middle of your brain that's called the pineal gland that's giving out the signals to how tall, how short you are, how muscular, or how bony you are. Your tiny little thing, small size, some of us, like a maybe a slightly bigger version of the red bean inside and that endocrine gland control all the other endo endocrine glands your hippocampus and all these things the tree located the pineal gland your you know pituitary gland yes pituitary and your pineal gland all these are very tiny they're very very tiny but they control your whole body they control the other endocrine glands which secrete things that control your spinal cord and control everything of your whole body. Your whole body system control center is in one tiny little organic chip the size of your pineal or pituitary gland. The two working together. Amazing, isn't it? So, where does the master seed faith go to? Your spirit man. All your spirit man has is a tiny little faith funny road into your spirit man. And the substance has formed. The substance or the evidence, the elect cause, the evidence. You want to see the root word for evidence? Very quickly, I'll give you all the other roots that are there. Hebrews 11, verse 1. Let's look at the word evidence. It's a simple word, elect cause. Proof. The proof. Sometimes I'll say the convic conviction. And, uh, okay, let's look a little bit theological dictionary. Alec cause. It is an account, a, a proof that is used for persuasion or convicting of all realities that this is true. The pragma is true. So it is the evidence. 
important evidence. Sometimes when they are processing your loan, nowadays everything electronic, but they may ask for your tax file. Why? Because your tax file will prove how much you earn. It's the proof for how much you earn. You might, you know, you might escape tax or all those things, but they say proof what you have earned. Uh, you might, they might, you might even show your bank account or so whatever. But in the end, they want to be legal, so proof. So your tax file. And faith is the proof of the things not seen. You got the proof we see. So don't do anything until you got the proof. Correct. You don't go to court without proof. You don't convict someone unless you got evidence. Evidence is important. Even circumstantial evidence is sometimes not good enough. The proof, sometimes what seal the conviction is the DNA. You haven't been there. You see, you haven't been there. Your DNA is here, sir. That's proof. Evidence of things not seen. Must have seen. All you need. But that's on your inside. As the process is working in your inside, you must be sensitive to move in the spirit, to flow with the spirit. Elijah need to look outside at what the angels are doing. The angels are doing the phanerosis. See, this is outside of you. These are the gifts of the spirit that the Holy Spirit work with angels, creating the evidence on the outside. Remember, I illustrated with. Better don't do too much other. That one go down. That one go down. <laughs> but remember, Second Samuel chapter five, David, mulberry trees. I don't know why I'm thinking mulberry thing or seed worms. Although there's no relationship. <laughs> I mean, you check mulberry trees, David, 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 and the Philistine. Mulberry trees, David and the Phil Philistines. Who make the marching sound? The angel. Does David need faith? Yes. He need faith to believe in God. Although their faith is exercised without being born again, different formats, but still they need faith. Because Hebrews 11 is a listing of all the Old Testament people who exercise faith. So they have to exercise faith. It's a master seed. So you need to read outside, which is when finally we can use the chart. Here's the chart coming up. The one with the angels and all those dying guys. Yes, this, this chart that we used how many Sundays ago? Two Sundays ago. So, we say that there's an anointing upon and an anointing within. Some energizing. Now, these are all the external. We work together. On your inside, your spirit, soul, and body. In your heart, the seed of faith is formed. So you will know that you know that you know. You know how sometimes you know some things in the spirit? That's it. But sometimes what you think you know, you check the evidence you didn't know. You were wrong. But there's this knowing. And uh, you know some things. So that's your master seed. The evidence of things not seen. The substance of things so forth. But outside, you must also have confirmation. This is where two, three witnesses. So there are some angels that energize the anointing upon. Some angels, more like spirit being types, they energize anointing within. This is especially New Testament. Then, this energy, you can see this arrow, they flow up, they flow in, flow up, flow in. These are like, I draw as hearts, uh, spirit beings that work with you. I draw as stars, angels that work with you. Now, these angels that energize wisdom, revelation, healings, miracles, these are all the gifts of the Spirit. All that control the elements around you, like weather, fire, wind, everything. So that every time, wherever we go, weather angels are always good. Working with us. Because we are one with them. And so sometimes when people look at the weather, you know, they say, Wow, oh, it's not cold, how cold, how cold. Sometimes they go there wrong. So I tell people sometimes you go to Pergamos and say, bring an extra jacket, it's going to be cold. Hey, they say you only how many degrees, how many degrees, they go there freezing. Because remember, what they tell you is in the past already, correct? 
and they might try to predict the future, but their prediction is not 100%. They cannot predict day-to-day -day changes. They can only see the satellite formation, see the cloud about to move where to where, see where the air pressure is going to go. Then they say, okay, within the next uh, week, this is what the weather will be. But if, it, if the velocity changes, the cloud moving, or the, or the air pressure changes faster, then the whole thing is upset. Can be forward move. Or something is added to the equation that they never measure. Volcano eruption there, brought some extra dust, came here, changes the whole thing. So all they have is an estimation. But we don't need that. We got the actual spirit being to create the whole weather for us. Yes, volcano can erupt left, right, center. And they say, oh! And there will be a canopy around us. That's why we call cathedral, like cathedral around us. That says, no, you don't come to this place until they are finished. See, they control the natural dimension. But all their energy, this is the interesting thing about this chart. All their energy to do whatever they need to do, here and do, Although they got some energy from here, some energy from there, and same with this, some of them get direct energy to work for you. The phanerosis. So this morning you learn phanero, the phaneros. Afternoon, phanerosis. You go home tonight, just cease and sleep. <laughs> so, these are worked by these. And like what, what Elijah was praying, he didn't have this anointing within, he has anointing upon. He was standing in the office of a prophet. He had just challenged the false prophets of Baal successfully. So he was still standing in the office of a prophet and he has angels that are in charge of bringing that anointing upon his life. But there are spirit beings in charge of weather, fire and wind. As he prayed, energy went from him. Some effects might, Elijah didn't make that noise. And then, the young boy go, Nothing! But actually things were changing. But they haven't hit the funny Ross section yet. Nothing visible yet. All in the invisible realm. And then they pray the second time. Third, fourth, fifth, seventh time. They began to change the cloud pattern. Now, but when they start the change, it is unstoppable within a few minutes the whole sky was filled with thunderclouds ready to rain upon the whole of Israel but it took one mustard seed of faith inside the man Elijah to release this energy can you see that this energy need to go through him for them to use this is the funny Rossi's says. If he doesn't believe, that's it, the end, God has to raise another man. So God always needs a human instrument. Somewhere in the middle is a human instrument, you and I. So all your prayers and all the energizing that God gives you, very valuable. If it is taken by this spirit being and they bring it according, if favorable to you. Whether it be wind, fire, weather, elements, creating miracles, wisdom, I say angels energize wisdom. So the energy that flows out to you, flow to them. So I could imagine this is just a cartoon illustration. Say so what? For cartoon illustration? Yes, because you're about to fall asleep because of your chicken rice. And uh, so the cartoon illustration is like, you are these stones. Okay, all this stone. So can you imagine the angel coming near the stone? 
See, like, like we all go around the bonfire, you should see in winter, in Sydney, it's so cold, we have the heater. So we have all night prayer and I give them an extra hour early because it was getting colder and colder. And uh, so we have only one heater. And so uh, towards the early morning, by, we actually start at 8 and we end at 4. So towards 2 something, I could see some of them getting more and more cold. Uh, and that night, uh, which was last Friday, the Lord says, you know, you can, you can end early but do this. So I meditated, did what I need, and then I, we had a communion, we had worship. And so uh, towards uh, Friday morning, uh, if you think this was cold, huh? But that was really cold, it's winter, and it's just the beginning of winter, and I told them, and by the way, it's going to get colder, because the angel said they're bringing the water over to that part of the world, and they need to be a bit, because when they do it, it turns things around, and they're trying to make it as friendly as possible, but suddenly you cannot avoid, and uh, there will be like extremes of weather in order for all those to, to complete before uh, the end of this next decade or so. To have more water and enough water to create all those farming things that we all need when we all are there. And uh, so there they are. And so towards the morning, we we had the chairs facing the pulpit, but the but the uh, heater was somewhere the back. So towards the morning, we all were around the heater. So I said, get around the heater so you're not so cold. Then we had a little bit of worship because the Lord said you have to worship a little bit uh, over the communion before you impart to them. So they had to worship for some time until it's enough. And then, so it's like we gather around uh, the heater. So can you imagine why sometimes angels stand in certain position? Some angels, they stand in certain position because the position is quote-unquote good receptivity. Where they're taking it, especially angels that are in charge of the anointing upon, they will stand in certain positions to create the anointing upon into your life. Then some, some angels merge with you on the inside to create the anointing within. And you can operate purely based on anointing within, purely based on anointing upon. And the ideal is to operate both. And it's the strongest manifestation of the funny seats. So you can see that angels need your master of seed faith. Because that little pineal pituitary gland size faith is all it needs to put yourself in the position to be a transmitter of the energy that's flowing. And as it transmit, they receive it. So if your angel is specialized in in, in the energy, and I've seen this, the Lord showed me, angels are so specialized that if they want to do something, even angels themselves will bring those spirit beings or angels that are specialized in those things. Because they can convert it into the energy that is necessary. It's just like, none of you, even though the, the, the light bulbs are quite warm, correct? It produces heat. And uh, none of us use light bulbs for ironing. Is it? Well, you you did light bulb. Heat equals ironing. Ironing smooth light bulb. Who knows? Maybe a very poor person cannot afford iron. You got light and iron at the same time. In the process, because it's not supposed to be done that way, get electrocuted, go to heaven faster. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> anyway, so you could, but you should not. And. Neither do you try to use the iron for your normal heater. One well, cold, put the iron there. It's not meant for heating up the room. It's just nice to iron your clothes. So each of the inventions of humans are so specialized. And all of them take the same electricity. Correct? The iron, the heater, the air conditioner, the lights, they're all using electrons. 
but they convert electrons into a thousand and one things like microphone, sound waves. Without batteries, this doesn't work. All use electricity. And they're trying to use less and less electricity to do the same thing. Which is why LED lights is fantastic. Because it needs so little voltage to make it light up. But I talked to an LED expert. You know the one that we bought the uh, the old first mother bar trip, the torch torches, torch light. You can never find it anywhere else. Say why? Because the guy had to actually make it himself. And uh, so, you know, remember those little square things? They can do reading. Those are LED. You cannot buy it anywhere. And I found this little shop in Singapore. And then when I went back there, I couldn't find a shop again. They keep changing. And then recently I said, no, I'll go for a look, okay? So, we have a look. Then I said, are you the shop that used to sell this? <laughs> because you are in the exact place, but you are not selling those things anymore. And the person said, yes. I said, remember I bought about nearly 20 of those things from you? Said, yeah, you are the one. And I said, don't you... Then I met the owner himself and said, he worked in Taiwan in an LED factory. So he's like an expert in LED. He knows how to make it work and he says a lot of those LED that you buy off the shelf, China, all that, they didn't put it properly. He says you need to still, still put something metal on it so that it drains the heat. It still got heat. But a lot of people don't realize it as a heat. So you need a proper base for it to run for years and years and years. So he said, he still got some parts that he made. He said, they don't sell those parts anymore. And I said, how many parts do you have? And he told me, said, whatever parts you have, make all a bunch and end of this month, I'll call him. he make it specially for me. So those of you who need the little, tiny little things, well, who we Eddie? Yeah. Eddie? Eddie might be middle man. <laughs> so now nah, we, we just give you at a fixed uh, at a cost price uh, when it comes. If there's enough, I don't know how many you can make. And he said, and they said, don't you make it anymore? I said, no, you know this this you know this is just like his hobby kind of thing. So he makes those little wait cute little. Have you seen some of those the first Madaba trip? The square little, you know, not the not the torchlight one. You can buy torchlight LEDs anywhere. But it's the square little pieces that you put in your pocket size and just nice for reading. It's like a little fluorescent light that's small. Uh, so he's going to make them for me. End of this month, check on him. So I said, no hurry, you know, I'll come back and get him, phone you. Now, all those run by electricity. So compli complex, so unique. And he makes those that are warm white, which is like slightly orangey and all those. Uh, all run on one thing and one thing alone. And next time they will invent more and more things. Electricity. Electricity. Of course, no sorry love for calling your power electricity. <laughs> Energy. Whatever. All those are not usable by us straight away. So you think about seven times glory, oh, seven times glory. Some of you very greedy, give me, give me, give me, seven times glory, oh, yeah, if God did all, answer your prayer, I'll give it up. <laughs> you know, we have to conduct your funeral service after that. Because you cannot absorb it, so your angels take part of it and slowly give it to you. It's just like, uh, uh, the seven times glory is like, uh, like a, like a supply of food for the seven years. You think you can eat one supply of food in seven years in one day? No! You know, firstly, humanly impossible. It has to be slowly channeled into your life. But of course, it's not going to be as slow as eating one meal. Uh, it can be faster than that. But that's just an illustration. Illustrations have limits. Uh, and, uh, so, this energy, you know, not all of us can use this energy. Uh, but the angels have channeled it into a form that we can receive. That is why anointing upon is important. Do you know anointing upon is based on your calling before you were born? 
When was Paul called to be an apostle? When was Jeremiah called to be an apostle? Before even he had a free choice. And you know why? Anointing upon is based on your DNA that you were given before you were born. Only certain DNA can take certain anointing. And that is why the gifts and the calling of God are really there. And without repentance. Because to change it means God to recreate you, which He's not going to do. If you were a evangelist, and you backslide, you went always, you sin, and you sin worse than the woman at the well, you know, instead of uh, five uh, husbands and uh, one living not right, you sin with the 500 and then, you know, whatever. But then you repent, came back, the day you came back, the anointing come back still works. You know why? You were created just for the energy. Can you understand that now? You were created for what you were created. And if you were made to be a coffee pot, which I don't actually drink coffee. Once in a blue moon you see me drinking coffee. One of them was surprised in the trip, say, Huh, you're drinking coffee? I said, Yeah, there's nothing else here. No, because we were in Argentina and a bus stop in no man's land somewhere. And some 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 you look across it's just flat land and there's just this tiny little petrol shop. And so I look at all the wordings in Argentina, speak Spanish, all Spanish. I say, everything looks like cafe, 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 cafe. So I say, okay, I have that one. You know, so I say, I have what the driver is having. <laughs> That's how I ordered. I say, you see that one? I have that one. <laughs> and I drank coffee. And uh, so later I found out there was another word down there called tea, ta, 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 ta. And that was tea. I say, ah, oh, I missed the tea. Okay. So, if you were a coffee pot, no matter how we scrub you, change you, you will always be a coffee pot. Don't put tea in a coffee pot. If you were some of those beautiful, artistic, you know the Chinese tea pot, some of very nice, and, I, and there's one that sometimes is, is clear, and they got a nice style of tea that become a flower, and you put this both a beauty to look at and a beauty to drink. Beauty to drink, no, a taste to drink. I, so they got this, and they put this, and the whole chrysanthemum or what actually become a big flower. Boom. And you just want to admire, like some of you, you take pictures of everything. So after a hundred pictures and whatever, and then you don't know why you must send to your friends. <laughs> you know? Your friends want to eat your photo or something. And uh, so I don't have the habit, but some people, you know, every time you order the food, snap, 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 snap. Wow, the internet must be full of pictures of food. And uh, so it's a beauty to look at and the beauty to pour the cup. So some of you might be specialized depots. How you change your DNA, you will never change. You were born for that kind of energy. Now you know why God to select us? He has to tune our physical DNA. So choose, we have to carefully choose the families we are born into. To get the right type of combination. Wrong combination, <laughs> You walk like that the rest of your life. <laughs> but you don't have to take a sorry. <laughs> and then we correct me and it. So some of you say, Pastor, can we change? Yes, there are many types of tea for the tea pot. Right? So if I had a flower pot, I, can, I, I know many types of tea that got type of flowers that can come beautifully. And they're quite expensive. They actually sell that in Australia too. I, I think it's bought from China. But you buy it, the tea comes in a round ball because it's a flower bowl. So when you when you when you open it and put it in, it becomes a flower. <laughs> Whatever flower there was, and then you drink that flower with part of the tea too, with the tea leaves. And so is there any part that we still can change? Besides dying or and going there and hoping you work in something else. Of course, there is no limit once you live this life. Because you can be added to you. It might take a few million here, years, million. Like if you're not a musician here and here you sing like a frog. <laughs> although you are a shit. When you go there, 
frogs don't exist anymore, or rather, sorry, if frogs are glorified, well, yeah, okay, flows in glorified form. I haven't seen that. You know, just talking to something, it's pretty big. But, go there. You can have the voice of a nightingale. You say, how? Slowly adds to some of those things. So, in the other side, there's a lot of things that you can become. It just takes time to absorb. Uh, and so, you now play the piano here, you go there, you can learn the piano. Or oh, this kind of piano are bigger. I've seen the heavenly piano. Here, our piano says 88 keys. There are pianos in heaven that have so many keys that you have to move them with your mind. So, there are uh, this DNA is born, anointing upon, gifts and calling before you were born. After you're born again, this anointing within gives you angles and changes. And the other thing is this these angels and these spirit beings can also give you a slight difference in that. In that, if your DNA has no wisdom here, it's not your specialty, but an angel hangs around with wisdom, because the angel, the angel has a DNA of wisdom. Your specialty might not be wisdom. Let's say your specialty is miracles, evangelism, <laughs> all the time. And you find it very tough. Every time you try to preach, you end up, you, you tend to teach, you end up preaching. So, it's not in your DNA. But, a teaching, I don't have it here, a teaching angel comes around. And just hangs around you. Because the angel hangs around you, the angel is like a part of you. Hanging around you is like a part of you already you begin to feel a teaching. See, God can supplement that and complement those things into your life as necessary. Sometimes God supplements it by you. Let's say you're evangelist. God puts you together with another member of the body of Christ who is in the teaching realm. So by yourself, you're lopsided. You walk also like that. Your right foot heavy. So God pair you up with someone who is left foot heavy. <laughs> so she said, when you walk together, are you both going to walk up like that? <laughs> One like that. No, no, no. Because somehow when you come together, the energy balance, zoom, 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 and you both do walk like that. But you take one away, the other guy like that. Hey, what's happening to me? The other guy will say, nah, yeah, nah, you go like quarter away, you don't want here anymore. The moment you leave, you also get, hey, hey, what's happening to me? What's happening to me? Because you have to exist together. Isn't God a good God? And sometimes He choose partnerships for you that you never chose. And sometimes, you know, He put you with people which in Ephesians chapter 4, the whole church as a whole balance itself. And the church as a whole, every member producing his part. The whole church become balanced. Even in Paul, when he talked about funny roses, didn't he talk about the body of Christ? Some an eye, some a leg, and all functioning. And each one balances each other. Because we humans are also so specialized, we cannot be everything. We cannot be everything. We can only be what God wants us to be. And in this lifetime, it's very limited. In the other lifetime, it's unlimited. You can expand even more. But in this lifetime, God has given us greater grace. Now you know why angels are good coming around you. Now they do not have to hang around you. Don't think that angels have to stick to you. So when you move, then you run, you go to run. No. Angels don't run, they just have to float next to you. But they can be far away still energizing you. There is no limit to their wireless. You know this thing here? Yeah? Doesn't mean that you have to be about two meters apart. Cannot further apart, the signal runs out. Boom, wait, no signal. Angels say no signal. You so say, hey, my angel no more signal. <laughs> it's gone. Lost wireless connection with your angel. No. 
the signal never breaks down. Anywhere, any place. If it's assigned to you, means there is a wireless connection. Correct? Every time you sign on in your iPhone or if you're wireless, you need an ID. You need an ISP ID. And then once you sign on, do you notice you can go and then you come back, it automatically locks on. And the thing is, our wireless is only one at a time. But every angel has his own wireless connection. So when the angel is assigned to you, you're connected. So don't always think, oh, my angel's around, angel's will you think your angels are like umbrellas? Huh? <laughs> no, they just have to be assigned to you. They don't have to, if they are around you all the time, where they got a chance to do work for you? Why are you so greedy, I mean, to me, me? Why do you think the angels are there finding you? What kind of angels do you have? I think you have the wrong version of angels. They will be doing different work, different things that are necessary for your life. But they are always connected to you. Once they're assigned to you, there's a connection that you have spiritually. A spiritual wireless connection. Angels are good. They minister to each part, each being online. And God cannot do all at once. As we grow, then can we be connected more and more. And in the end, we learn how to connect to everything. And guess who is connected to everything and anything? Jesus and God. In the end, to be like God, you learn how you can connect to everything. So through others, you also remain connected. And everything is related to everything else. Then the funny rose is exactly the way Jesus is. Jesus is connected to everything because every molecule is connected to Him. So when you have Jesus in your heart, hope, this anointing within, has actually a great capacity which humans could not do before. The born again experience gives us a capacity in the New Testament that it says in the book of Hebrews, the old cannot be perfected without us. They need us. And we in the finale of the glorious church, we are the most privileged. Where we got so much thing. Although sadly the world is getting darker. But the church has just come into the most best and glorious period possible. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your grace, your mercy upon our lives. How can we say thanks, Father, for all that you have done? How can we ever praise you enough? We can never, Father. But we will praise you day and night for all that you do as we understand the work of your angel, the work of faith, and all these dimensions. We will praise you day and night. And we will become the new temples of the Holy Spirit that praise and worship every hour of every day in our lives. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Let's all rise.
Jesus' name.